have an update on the away luggage or the away travel i'm not sure how they phrase themselves right are they away luggage or away travel anyway you guys are aware i've spoken about it previously in my other podcast episode about the ceo steph curry i think or steph corey right steph corey stephanie corey um ceo of uh, away has now been replaced or has uh, effectively stepped down due to the controversy that happened a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago. So if you're not familiar, uh, The Verge published a really scathing editorial piece. Some people claim it as a hit piece, but it's not a hit piece. It was factual, factual um, uh, reportage of events happening at the workplace, which, if anything, were very similar to the experiences that I've had in startups where essentially you are led under the stewardship of a very toxic CEO or founder who at some t- how who I have sympathy for because at most times it's because they're heavily invested in the product or the services that they founded, right? It's their little baby. So they feel like they have to micromanage things. They're always on tender hooks, especially sometimes if the investment, random investment hasn't gone as well. There's a lot of pressure happening there. And sometimes it happens to seep through in the way that they kind of operate as an effective founder, effective CEO, which can lead to some batshit crazy um ways of conducting business like in the away company where they weren't allowed to email each other weren't allowed to have private groups um you know the the constant need to have people come in to work outside of their working hours they couldn't take holidays off just a really toxic environment i didn't necessarily breed didn't necessarily um uh bring the best out of most employees right it, 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 they were under the assumption that every employee wanted to be a founder when in fact most employees just want to be employees they want to earn a good living they want to do right by their family and keep it moving so this is an update from the verge that basically um elaborates on what's happened post the article coming out so the story says the following um a way replaced the ceo steph curry after uh the verge investigation um this is it here it says the following Away CEO Steph Corey is stepping down just four days after an investigation uh, at The Verge highlighted the company's toxic culture. Corey, one of the luggage brand's co-founders, will be replaced by former Lululemon executive Stuart Hazelden, though Corey will still continue on as executive chairman. Basically, she's been iced out. The news comes after days of public backlash due to the leaked documents showing Corey routinely Im- Im- intimidated employees on public Slack channels. After the Verge uh, initial story broke, news leaks showed uh, Away was directing employees not to engage with the article, even from personal to social media accounts, which is the which is the craziest thing, right? Imagine doing an expose. Imagine the Verge doing an expose of Away. On the Away side of it, they have to be aware of, they have to be knowledgeable that the reason why some of that stuff has got out is because there's moles or there's leaks in your own organization. So for them, for that same company to then decide to publicly announce on their Slack channel and to t- kind of tell their employees not to engage the article is ridiculous and quite um, stupid, really, isn't it? Like it, ridiculously stupid, ridiculously, ridiculously stupid. And again, someone took another screenshot of it, uploaded it onto somewhere and then the, 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 or sent it to the Verge. The Verge got a hold of it and published it straight away. It's like, what are you doing? Like, honestly, what are you doing? Um, Away does not um, allow employees to email each other and ask that direct messages be kept to a minimum. The result is in almost all conversations take place on the public Slack channel, which, of course, is the most toxic thing ever. If you're familiar with managers in your workplace to do that thing where they slack you a, res- a, a request and then they email you a request in the chain of in the, and cc everybody else and bold it and make it look as if they've been harassing you and diff- har- they've been trying to get your attention in three different channels you've been ignoring them that's a similar to the slack public ch- public chat kind of you know talk i've never been a fan of it i've never been a fan of slack anyway i think it's very distracting you you add slack on top of an open workspace and you effectively just got a ticking time bomb of distraction, right? Pings coming at you, especially in workplaces where I think I've worked somewhere like this before, where they told you to always have your notifications on. It's like, no, if you have, if if you need to announce something, gather us all as a group or send us all an email. I'm not going to stand there and, and wait for a ping so I can know what's going on and to kind of get my attention and shit. That doesn't work that well. And again, open workspaces just invite people to come over and just disturb you for no point, no, no reason. Sorry. Um, it continues here. Uh, Slack channels uh, where executives give harsh feedback and reprimand people for small mistakes. You could hear her typing and you knew something bad was going to happen. A former employee told The Verge. Uh, Corey publicly apologized for her behavior the day after the story broke, saying she was appalled. Um, where is it again? She made a statement, right? Let, let me quickly read that statement because I didn't actually read her statement. What, what was the statement that she made? Uh, Steph Corey. Where is she? there we go i do feel kind of sorry for her though because she, you you are a co-founder of a brand and because it's publicly listed or publicly traded you are now been ousted out of your own company just due to your, your own bad behavior which is really 
really sad. It's already sad already when people lose their jobs anyway, but when you're the actual founder of the company, co-founder of it, you know, they were the darlings of Silicon Valley at some point because, you know, there were two female co-founders, which shouldn't be important, but it is. And also it goes to show that, you know, the toxic behavior in startups or in small businesses isn't only limited to men, you know, uh, power corrupts everybody in some respects. So there we go. So this is her apology, which obviously was a precursor to her basically stepping down. It says the following here, uh, starting and growing a company is incredibly hard and I've made mistakes as we built away. Of course you have. At times I express myself in ways that hurt the team. I can imagine how people felt reading those messages. I was appalled and embarrassed reading them myself. I'm not proud of my behavior in those moments and I'm sincerely sorry for what was said, how I said it and I was wrong, plain and simple. Since last year's incidents, I've worked hard to improve as a leader, which we haven't heard really. I think, again, you're just trying to, I think you should have just left it at that and said, I'm sorry, I'm going to try to do better later. I think continuing it and saying that you're improving yourself isn't true because no one mentioned it in the article. Or maybe they didn't mention it because they wanted to like, you know, throw under the bus, but it didn't seem that anyone mentioned that she's been, she's changed as the year has gone by. Um, I've worked hard to improve as a leader, working closely with an executive coach and building a leadership uh, team I can learn, lean on and learn from. It's my responsibility to examine my actions and to sit and to set not just the standards for our work, but the standards for our behavior toward each other and the tone for the culture we want. One that is in line with the brand we convey. I know I have more work to do and I'll do better for the team. You're not going to do better now, is it? It seems, unfortunately. Um, brands get nervous, isn't it? They get nervous. So the public perception is so like they tr as much as people try to tell you not to pay attention to social media, not to read your comments. Big companies do the exact opposite, innit? The moment people start to like, and it's even a small minority. I don't think your general or white customer cares a, a, an iota about this issue, right? The moment a small minority of people make some noise, and again, I don't think the whole majority of the work face, workforce in a way is actually affected by this either. It might just be a small, especially the decision makers. I don't think if you work in the store, you probably have felt the pressure from Corey in this regard, this Steph Corey woman. Probably not. I don't. I wouldn't imagine so. Um, but the moment you make some noise and it kind of starts to shake up on the media circuits, you know, the people in the boardroom start to get a bit nervous, public perception is everything to them because, you know, if public perception dwindles for a way, which is essentially a luggage company that no one really needs, the company is gone and all of a sudden the investment's gone down the toilet. And if anything, if there's anything we know, rich people, if people don't like losing money, rich people don't like losing money even more. Do you know what I mean? Like, but they want to hold on to theirs, which makes sense and they work hard for it. Um, on a company level, she says on a statement here, over the last 12 months, we've invested in creating a culture that allows our people to thrive, including executive coaching to our senior staff, diversity, inclusion, training, all this bullshit stuff that we don't need to learn about. We encourage employees to share our concerns and HR. Uh, we read in an article, doesn't reflect our company. Ah, anyway. So she apologized, she said sorry, but sorry it's too late for that. Um, employees voiced their skepticism that executive would actually change. It's not like this was the first time she needed to reprimand for her management and the conduct one former worker told The Verge. Uh, she knows exactly what how she, she's hurt and she just has issues, a hum, ho-hum blanket apology as the public feels like it's all done, which I think is justified for her stepping down. I think there needs to be, as much as it kind of pains me to see the WeWork founder kind of, you know, get ousted from his own company and then get a $200 million settlement, right? Which is insane. Only in startup land can you fail and still get money, right? Companies raise investment, run away with people's money, the company fails, and then they still get to save, hold on to money, or the money kind of, you know, springs them into another occupation, similar to kind of Nicholas Oliver from People.io, People.io formerly, you know, a complete crook. And a complete charlatan who basically ran away and didn't pay any of his employees, including myself, any of the funds that we were owed. I think it's been a year now since we haven't paid, been paid our salary. And he's now gone up and set up another company that he's also trading under. So I think that happens a lot. But there needs to be some rep there needs to be some consequences for like, you know, leading a company and basically infesting it. Because we don't know how far how long this is gonna take to recover. Because sometimes this sort of bad behavior, it then festers into other people. Middle management starts to adopt this same kind of behavior because they, that's that's how they know how to get far in a company. And sometimes you don't, you're not really conscious of it, of the effects that you're having on your middle managers who are then kind of seeping that into some of their uh, people that they're managing. And then the whole company's culture is completely rotten to the core. It's going to take a long time to change it, a real, real long time. Um, duh, 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 duh. The company told the Wall Street Journal that the search for a new CEO has been underway since the spring, implying that the Verge reporting was not the reason Corey was stepping down yet, right? In light of the article, it's been a difficult few days for the company, co-founder Jen Rubio added, but we don't want to overshadow the announcement. Hassel has begun here on January 13th. 
bruv, that's her friend, you know. Imagine how big that's being your friend and you're just like completely dismissing her like she's some any woman. Bloody hell, man. No loyalty in startups, isn't it? Um, Hasselden mandate will likely involve turning around the company culture and he may have relative experience, relative and experience. Lululemon faced its own reports of toxic management, which commented in CEO Lauren and never Laurent, uh, put another woman, her huh? resignation last year. In the aftermath of the scandal, Hasselden took control of the company, people and culture functions, the teams that they are directly responsible for creating a healthy working environment. Okay, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Imagine being a firefighter of a CEO. You get hired just to kind of steady the ship and kind of make and enact some change culture-wise and then you kind of, you know, go to the next kind of um, complete shit show and then do the same. So, yeah, that's quite cool for that dude. But, yeah, um, I feel kind of sorry for Steph, to be honest, a little bit. But then again, I don't because I'm sure she was this, she was, she was a bad leader for a long time and now it's sort of kind of finally caught up with her and it's too late to kind of make those um you know corrections and again she's probably set for life anyway it doesn't really matter money wise but again people like this aren't necessarily driven by money so that's not necessarily a point to bring up but if that was a point of contrition then it shouldn't be because she's set but you know she's gonna have to learn better and if she is a serial entrepreneur she comes back again with another startup maybe that will be a much better uh, proposition for people to work at because she's gonna learn from this experience that she's been in but she i just don't understand how especially with how sensitive people are on social media and how everything's about mental health and shit you can't be this toxic in the workplace you can't treat your employees like this and expect to get away with it like they're gonna throw you under the bus whether you're a woman a person of color you know i don't know you're disabled in some way don't think you're gonna be able no one's gonna stand for it like they're not gonna stand for it. especially if you're gonna work in a place for eight hours a day 40 hours a week you're not gonna stand for somebody treating you like a absolute you know like something they found the bottom of their shoe it's just not on really isn't it